is Jeremiah. We're back on beauty, heaven. Beauty, explanation, heaven. We explain beauty by simply revealing heaven. And that goes for the doctrine of heaven, which is Christianity. That's beauty in itself. This is Jeremiah. We have lots of work here. Uh, I am surrounded. I greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be, we must be saved. Second person, third person. Personal pronoun. Let's get going. So we're here to get going with beauty in heaven and we are just rejoicing together with you right now as we as we say amen to all of this. As we say amen to the amen. The bright and morning star. I wrote a song called Morning Star. I'll probably put that up there for you under my song list. Uh, that's in the computer and we're having some tech issues, but uh, I have some music coming up for you. and It should be up there under Jeremiah Michael Pearson Music. You, could, you should be able to click on my videos and, and they're there for you to listen to, to give a little bit of more personal uh, look into this ministry with some artwork that I have online and some of my favorite artists or something, show you a couple of pictures, a couple of pictures, I might make a couple of comments. It's okay for educational purposes to take pictures of other people's movies actually, you, as long as you uh, make it short and so forth, there are some free legal um, but this is Jeremiah. Let's change gears. Let's get back into beauty. Beauty is here. We're in the last chapter of your Bible. And uh, we greet you in the only name as we rejoice together with you in Koinonia. As we make contact through teaching. I am a teacher that makes contact through teaching. That's my modus operandi. I, I don't have much time for a lot of looking at political things. I recently, I just I, I just went online with the web and so I've been looking at some of the political situations in the United States because I live here, but um, I'm not a zealot. I don't have a lot of neoclassical uh, philosophies. Uh, I, I'm here to teach the Word of God and we preach the coming of Jesus Christ no matter who's in power or who's good or who's bad. We don't. Uh, we focus on our everlasting portion here. And that's what we should do. It doesn't mean we don't talk about our temporary portion or things that we encounter in our human bodies. Uh, we do have time for that. Our lovable Lord Jesus Christ said to occupy until he comes. So that means to stay busy at what we're doing. And at the same time, he's not going to come upon us surprisingly. Right? Matthew 24 and Luke. He's not going to snap, crack, oh, we didn't know he was coming. No, 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 no. Every, many of you have ascertained, every few, every, uh, only a few moments go by before this Bible teacher reminds you that we're ready to get out of here. I mean, we, we, we've had enough of this. My goodness gracious. America's never seen some of the things that's been seen recently. I'm, I remember walking down the street in 1965 as a 10-year-old in, in, in Orange County, California. Orange trees everywhere, no traffic, uh, no one parked in the streets. Everyone had their own driveway. Uh, people had one job and they kept it for 30 years and uh, stability and it was near, it was near utopia. Drive-ins, uh, Amazingly wonderful Southern California life. Amazing stuff. Indeed, William Penn's American Dream uh, personified. Now, let's get going into beauty today. And speaking of beauty, of course, which uh, having lived in Southern California for quite a few years and uh, spending a lot of time at the beach, it, it, if you're healthy and you live by the beach of California for quite a few years, then you know what William Penn's goal was for the American dream and the pilgrims. You, you, you've experienced it. If, if indeed you, you had good health and good friends and so forth. Uh, God did indeed give you what he doesn't give to most people. And, uh, and, and it's 
beautiful. It's, uh, uh, but anyway, let's get back to the lesson germane. As I, my brain's a little clouded, I apologize. I, I have Romans we're working on today. Just to give you a behind the scenes here, we have music I'm working on. I'm going to put up there for you with some pictures of me or something, you know, just some artwork, um, famous artists or something, which I have to use it from an academic perspective. Uh, otherwise, you can't use it. You, you can use a lot of things in terms of people's music. Uh, sometimes I think you have to advertise their stuff or recognize them or something, but uh, there's a lot of legal ramifications. I, I just read some of the recent uh, Supreme Court justice uh, a ruling on uh, guns in and out of the home. What can an American citizen carry? How much? When? Where? And it was very complicated. I mean, you, you can go online and find out how smart you're not, kind of. <laughs> that Supreme Court ruling was really something. I mean, a lot of terminology, some of it I don't even remember hearing some of that terminology. And then I heard some of the COVID terminology. Woo! A couple of doctors were debating the origin and the transmutation between humans and then animals and back to humans. And I'm telling you, you talk about something complicated. Wow, I didn't know that it was that complicated. It is very, very, very complicated, these pathogens and so forth. But uh, uh, so I, I was humbled by the new legal decision from the Supreme Court, and I was humbled by two doctors discussing uh, how pathogens work, and these strains move, and and they mutate, and they resist and get stronger, whatever. Woo, I, but you know what? We're here to stay, stay away from all that super complex stuff here. We're, we're going to talk about the beauty of the gospel here. We're at Revelation 22, and let's get started as we dig into Revelation chapter 22, uh, Revelation chapter 22, and uh, I have a bad habit of saying Revelation, I don't know why, but it's the book of Revelation, okay? Maybe that's because there's revelations in the book. But it's considered one revelation of Jesus Christ, which means uh, you, you're, you're going to see everything that Christ has planned for the end, because he's called Alpha and Omega, and what you're looking at is you're looking at the end. He's revealing the end of everything in in in, uh, in 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 some detail, right? And, and what's pertinent for us or significant for to us is things that are relative to us. And Revelation 21 and 22, even 19, are some of the most most really supremely profound things that are related to us because we're following Jesus Christ. We're saved, you know. Jesus saves, Jesus saves. So we're just rejoicing in all the things that we're going to experience. And I've decided to make that the main theme of this year. The primary theme for 2022 is beauty, big time. And it will probably be the prime primary theme in 2023, should the Lord not come. And when we say should the Lord not come, we stop everything because that's just too sad to say that... Uh, that we're going to have to hang around here basically without the Lord, and that's not good. It's good because we're productive, and we have koinonia and so forth, but it's, it's not good because uh, he's coming for those who love his appearing. And we teach that here every five minutes here, that we love his appearing here. And, and the reason why we love his appearing is because we love him. See? This is New Covenant. Let's get going. We're continuing with beauty. We're 20, 29. We're, get, we're getting up to 30 now. We're getting close to 30. So I hope you're enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. I, uh, I can do this all day and almost all night. Sometimes I find myself turning my movies off at night. I have a lot of black and white movies. Westerns. I like Westerns a lot. but I, I like the horses and everything. But uh, And the covered wagons and the, and the cowboy hats. and Everything from the spurs, the boots, the uh, boots. Outdoor camping and cooking, but uh, it sounds like a very exciting life in America in the 1800s and so forth, where everyone was going out west and, and so forth. And uh, uh, 
I might watch one of my favorite movies tonight about the West. Uh, what is the name of that movie? Pecos or... Uh, I forgot the name of Pecos. It's one of my favorite movies. And the name popped out of my head. But anyway, let's get back to the lesson. I, I don't want to get all into... Uh, but it's a very charming movie. Uh, well done. Just uh, a lot of care and help and the man helps the family uh, out west. There are greenhorns, as they say, but let's get going into Revelation 22. And, um, and, and and my mind is all over the place today, and I'm trying to get settled down in the beauty because we've had Romans today. We're, we're trying to organize Romans 2 through 5, maybe 6, and that's that's a big job because that's some of the thickest stuff Paul did. And we're trying to, we're trying to also reconcile or add Romans, uh, Hebrews 10, 11, 12 with those chapters because Paul is telling you the legal ramifications of initiation uh, and what are the prime components or the, what's the big idea with law and grace which is a little difficult to explain and he does a very good job and I'm getting ready to, to, to write that out and what makes it even more complicated is when you add Hebrews 10, 11, 12. When you add Hebrews 10, 11, 12 to the mix of Paul's Romans discourse on law and grace, because he goes right back to Abraham again in the, the end of Hebrews, which he thoroughly goes over in, in Romans. And, and what makes it even more complicated is Corinthians takes it from there with, with John and Thessalonians. It, it, it works like that. It works, it works with Romans, and then it goes to Hebrews. Then it goes kind of back to Corinthians and John and Thessalonians, and that's how it kind of builds. And I'm, I'm working on that for you right now. I want you to get uh, full comprehension of sound doctrine, and I'm very happy with what hard work produces here. You know, what is that? Lesson 58. Um, I have, I call it a workman. You know, that's 58 on the list here, a workman, and that's on the previous channel, not on this channel. Uh, I might bring workman over here, but I'm, I'm not sure. But workman is on the previous channel where we talk about Paul saying a workman handling accurately the word of God. So. That's what we're doing here. You know, we're working hard. Um, uh, I've only got one kind of a, one devoted assistant right now. Uh, we had a couple, but they, they seem to have flaked out somewhat. But we're here to rejoice in what help we do have and all of this. And right now, we're going to uh, get get back into Revelation 22. But I wanted to remind you that Bible study is something that, that you just keep plugging away at. You know, the, there's only one master here. I, I'm not the master. I'm a student. I'm a scribe. That's all. That's all I am. That's all I am. I'm one worthless human being that, for some reason, God decided to love me. That's all I am. Why He loved me? I, 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 I sometimes I really wonder why and how. I, it's really. I remember when I first went to church. It was kind of like that. It was kind of like, do I kind of really belong here? And I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to tap me on the shoulder and say, you know, what are you doing here, God? But, uh, but the Lord removes all of those ideas. Now, I'm going to get the Romans and the sound doctrine out of my head. Because it's very, very much in my subconscious right now. But let's get to beauty right now. Because I even have Psalm 4 we're working on. Some of you uh, will be able to get into Psalm 4 soon. I just finished Psalm 3, uh, Psalm 5, Psalm 6 we'll probably skip. Uh, we'll probably just breeze through and mention a few things in the Psalms. I'm not going to review every Psalm. Psalm 6 will be snapped for this channel. Psalm 6 is kind of negative a little. So remember, I, I mentioned to you that everything that's basically negative in 2022 is basically at a minimal, uh, diminutive uh, posture, okay? 
And, and that's the way the ministry will be throughout until the rapture comes. Or I pass away, either one. I'm, we're, we're basically done with talking about a lot of evil people. I have a couple of videos on politicians and some of my opinions on some politicians a little bit. Uh, just a couple of videos and some pictures on, on that are just for the adult ministry. So, Because this is general population. It's time to start rejoicing now. It's time to start saying a lot of hallelujahs and rejoicing over Babylon and not facing Babylon. Now some of you are going to face Babylon and that's when I can't stop um, talking about adverse parties, opposition, and so forth. However, the previous channel is just for that. For you adults and you teenagers who, who are facing a lot of opposition, you need to, to go to my previous channel, which is Jeremiah Michael Pearson. Okay? Th this channel, to remind you, is all videos are basically... What's the word I'm looking for? They're basically harmless, kind of. We're focusing on happy stuff, like, all the time now. And I will direct you to the previous channel. And I also have a channel devoted to nothing but adverse party scriptures. I call it Jeremiah Michael Pearson 2022 Sin. If you type that in YouTube and a couple of other places that have my videos, you'll see my videos there. Okay? Let me remind you of some overarching ideas here. You know, back to the top. And of course, this is Protestant, Christian, Quaker stuff here. Red, red letter edition, King James, Ephesus, Philadelphia church stuff here. I don't deviate from sound doctrine here. Some people have told me that I deviate, uh, you know, profoundly in my science. Well, listen, I, 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 I would like for them to show me in simple grammar, from, from a simple 4th to 12th grade grammar, uh, a grammatical perspective, show me how I'm wrong, because you can't do it. I, 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 I've heard some professors who have PhDs try to, to, to twist simple scriptures on the radio, and we had some of, that, were, that were affiliated with us in a non-denominational church in, Costa, in Orange County. Where they tried to confront us about our basic Christian doctrine because they considered themselves to be different from us but still be Christians. Or they were a different denomination, and so they were kind of making fun of our perspective, and, and they thought that they had some PhD guys who could substantiate their claim to their uh, legitimacy to disagree with us on some points in the Bible. Which was like, yeah, I don't think so. And in, in a spirit of love and care and truth, there, there was actually a big war that developed, but the war disappeared when some of these churches that I was affiliated with and their affiliates, affiliates became evangelical and they became what you might call Laodicea. See, they went from Philadelphia to Laodicea. So, and maybe even Thyatira and Pergamos. So I don't know about what's happened to those particular churches. I, I don't live there anymore, and I don't know what's going on. So, But I did hear some bad news, but we'll, we'll let that go. But there were some people who tried to confront us, and they tried to use grammar, and it was one of the most ridiculous things I have ever heard, especially someone who has a PhD, which you can tell the individual does not know grammar. They said they knew grammar because they were quoting some Greek and Hebrew text. If my memory was correct, and what they were doing was they were quoting Greek, but they but they were not understanding the grammar in the Greek. They they, they weren't identifying predicate nominatives and predicate adjectives. They and they had misplaced modifiers and so forth that they were trying. In other words, the grammar was quite simple and they were confusing and prevaricating it. Such as when Jesus said, uh, pray that you may be a common worthy to escape all these things that are coming upon the sons of men uh, on the entire face of the earth. And they were saying that that's not what the Greek meant. 
And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean to tell me that you're disagreeing with the simple words based upon some sort of Greek interpretation you have? Which means that what you're saying is, is the red letter edition of my King James Bible it is not teaching me the proper text. That's what they were essentially saying. And I thought to myself, this, this is not good. Uh, I don't mention any names or anything, but it, it, was, it was a large affiliate. And uh, it, it, it's just, it's just horrible. Uh, it's one of the most horrible things I've ever seen. As a Bible teacher, I've ever heard in any ministry was for them to to take a very simple scripture and then try to create something else based upon some some false interpretation of Greek when the simple grammar is irrefutable right there to your face. It's like saying, uh, see Dick Run, and, and then try to change it. And you can't change see Dick Run. You can't change it. And, and it, it's just, it's lamentable. Jeremiah's Lamentations. I, I don't... Wow, we. Um, anyway, I wanted to show you something. Because Luke is something that I, that I need to get in a little bit more recently. I have kind of left Luke, a lot of Luke, out of my my lessons, and that's not good because the only way to really give a comprehensive look is to give a comprehensive look, right? There's a lot of work here, and it's a wonderful labor of love, isn't it? It sure is. I, I was going to show you something, uh, a couple, one or two items. Um... Let, 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 let's look at one of these scriptures that, 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 that some of these guys, I, I just, it, it's just so sad because what they're doing is, is they're trying to twist the word and, and a lot of things, are, one thing that's very powerful in Christianity is the promise that God's not going to give his wrath to you. That's one of the big promises of the Bible, that he may spank the living daylights out of you, but he will never bring you his anger and wrath. Never, and and and, and for and to, and to have certain groups of people bring insertions like that into the church, it, it's just absolutely horrible. Uh, obviously, the Lord's going to allow it to happen, and we're not out to punish anybody per se. The Lord's in charge of punishment. It's just that it's just sad. It's more sad than anything else. Because I can remember one of the, one of the last uh, times I listened to to, to uh, that ministry or one of these ministries, they they said that. Uh, that one of the most important scriptures in the Bible, which is uh, Luke 21, uh, 36, Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So he says, you, you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. They, they tried to say that Jesus didn't mean all these things, escape. And I thought to myself, this, this is really bad news. When someone reads simple fourth grade grammar from the master, and they try to change the fourth grade grammar. That the word escape doesn't mean escape. Or, or counted worthy doesn't mean accounted worthy. It means something else. Or, or, or all these things that are coming upon uh, mankind, it, it doesn't mean everything that's going to come upon mankind. The Lord didn't mean all these things. So uh, it, it's just, uh, I, I can't even think about it that much anymore. It, it is just, it is absolutely horrible. And, and we're, but let's, we're going to get back to beauty. But I just want to mention that, that the, the beauty of the Bible is for you to understand that, 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 that God, he does spank his children, but he's not going to bring his wrath on you ever. Because you've been appointed to learn righteousness and hate evil and, and, and grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ so that you will not enter into any sort of severe wrath or torture or something along those lines. 
אוקיי? Now I want to show you one more uh, scripture for the end times and another promise to let's take a look. let's go right back to beauty. Because I want to let that go. I want to read a couple things. Um, that's good enough for now. Because the same people who are in Revelation 21, 22 are the same people who are going to escape the tribulation period. And I don't have a PhD where I don't understand simple grammar and what the master said, the master means. I, 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 what the master said, you're going to escape all these things. That means all these things. And the word escape, if the, the word escape, he didn't say half escape. I've been going online recently, and they, they're, they're talking about, oh, get ready for underground bunkers or something here in America. And we, we can see why they're thinking of, along those lines, because they're doubting God, and God's not going to bring you uh, 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 the... Uh, the, the sixth seal of the book of Revelation, which I'm about ready to go over again. He's not going to bring the sixth seal to you. It's not going to happen. Where, where all men are hiding under the rocks. And, and some of these uh, affiliates and these uh, different denominations within the, the Christendom, they, they do teach that you're going to be one of the people in, in Revelation uh, uh what is that, seven? You're going to be one of the people hiding under the rocks and stuff. No. That type of experience, you'll never have to engage. The Lord has not appointed you to all these things that some of these people are referring to. By the way, that was uh, Revelation chapter 6. And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Now, why would Christians hide themselves from the Lamb? from the face of the Lamb. When it's exactly the face of the Lamb that you own. You're never divorced from the face of the Lamb. Never. And you'll never fear the face of the Lord. Why? Because you're loved by the Lamb. So, so all this stuff here, and, and by the way, uh, the end of, of Revelation chapter 6 is probably referring to the first half of the tribulation period, which is about ready to snap, crackle, pop, happen any day now. Because the Holy Spirit is restraining evil and their ugly head, and when we're gone, it's bet, all bets are off. This is when these things are going to happen. Why any person who says they belong to a Christian church would say that we're going to hide ourselves from him that sits on the throne? I'm going to remind you that one of the beautiful things about being a Christian, since we're in the beauty right now, is you're not going to get involved in this. I don't know why anybody who seeks the Lord every morning who tells the Lord they love him, that under, under, under any circumstances would they try to hide themselves from the person that they wake up in the morning and say they love. I don't understand that. And, 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 and some of these people are, are out there in the world here, even in America, that tell us that we're going to have... I, I used to pass out gospel tracts at, at, at the beach with one, one of these gentlemen. Yeah, that, that scripture's for us. I said, bro, do you know simple grammar? Why would I, the person who we love dearly, why would we hide ourselves? The only people that run away and hide from the Lord are people who don't know the Lord. Some of you out there may have been... been, been led down the, the, the wrong path. I'm, I'm here to help you with that. 
I'm a Bible teacher. I, I teach this whole book here, especially things that are related to sound doctrine under the new covenant. I have yet to teach on David and Goliath, uh, 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 Gideon, Ezra per se, or, or a Zerubbabel building the wall. Or, uh, I, I, I've mentioned that only once or twice in passing. Uh, you, you can't teach the whole Bible, uh, you know, uh, per se. It's very difficult to teach the whole Bible in detail, uh, you know, with, with comprehension, and you know, forget it. We're here to teach the principles of the commands of Jesus Christ, and that's what we that's what we center everything on here. Everything is centered on the commands and the red letters of this Bible here. Because the Hebrew says, in the last days, Father has spoken to us through his Son. So maybe we should maybe we should do that. Huh? Maybe? Maybe we should do exactly what Hebrews chapter 1 says. In olden times, God spoke to, to, the, to the prophets in all different kinds of different kinds of ways, and in various ways, and in trickles of light, and trickles of truth, and a little truth over here, and a little bit of mystery over there. It's, that's, all, that's all gone now, because we have the exact effulgence of Father in Jesus Christ now. So that means that we should really be focusing on the exact effulgence before we start getting into trickles and, and, and getting confused, like studying Solomon. I just went through Solomon chapter 3. Solomon didn't teach instant salvation through the commands of God, but Jesus does. Instant, snap, crackle, pop, the kingdom is yours. Does Solomon do that? No. Does David do that as father? No. Do they do it in a roundabout fashion? They sure do. That's what I'm here for, to help you with that. As my buddy Rick used to say, Jeremiah don't play. This is all simple. We take our time. We, we stay on task. We, we, we don't get confused. And I was talking with a Bible teacher here the other day, and he, he, he must have mentioned 15 subjects at one time. I said, bro, 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 we, we tackle one subject at a time around here, at least I do. It's very difficult to tackle 15 different subjects at one time, because all you do is make yourself confused. And now, now, now I, I can do that on a rare occasion when, once I've gotten organized. I can add multiple subjects. But it's one of the most dangerous things to do because what if you don't understand one of the subjects? You know, all we do is go down the road of confusion, and I don't want that. I don't know about you. Let's get the beauty now. If we talk about the beauty of deliverance and the beauty of God's promise that he's not going to let you go through anything pertaining to 